Hey, so far we've made a lot of progress with incorporating a new transaction pool into the application. Now this collects all the transactions that have occurred. However, this only works on the level of an individual blockchain. But our application is designed to interact with other instances of this same app. For example, we can broadcast a new array of blocks to all interested parties when they're mined in a local blockchain application. We need to do the same for transactions. We want to broadcast transactions as soon as they're made in the API transact method. To do this, we're going to attach the transaction pool to the pub sub class. So head to the main index.js file. And then we're going to attach the transaction pool within that object that is going into the pub sub constructor. So right alongside blockchain, make sure to have transaction pool. Once you have that down, let's add this within the pub sub class itself. So that is within app slash pub sub. And then in the constructor, we also wanted to accept a transaction pool. And as the result, we'll also set this transaction pool to the incoming transaction pool object, just like we have the local blockchain. All right, nice. Now we also need a new channel for broadcasting transaction messages. So recall that these channels allow publishers to broadcast messages over specific streams. And then any subscriber on that stream can find that message as long as they're listening to the message on that channel. So let's have a transaction over here. So we have a transaction key for this channel whose value is also transaction. Now, thanks to our existing subscribed channels code, we're going to automatically subscribe to the channel now that it's in the overall channels map. All right, nice. Now, the next thing we want to add is just like our broadcast chain method, let's also have a broadcast transaction method. And this is actually going to take a transaction argument. The result is going to be to call this.publish, just like our existing broadcast chain method. And the channel that we want to specify is channels.transaction. Cool. The message is going to be the transaction object itself, but we can only send strings over the channels. Therefore, we're going to send the json.stringified form of this transaction object. All right. Finally, we need to make sure that we can handle the incoming transaction message within the handle message function. Right now, we have an if condition where it checks that the channel is equal to channels.blockchain, and therefore it calls this.blockchain.replace chain. Now, we could add another condition for if channel equals channels.transaction. However, let's make a more extensible format for this by using a switch statement. With a switch statement, we can boil down the number of if conditions we'd eventually have to write. And let's switch directly on the channel variable. And this allows us to make case statements for each possible value of the channel. So first up, we have the blockchain case, which is our existing one, in which case we'll add this.blockchain.replace chain of the parsed message. Now, if we get to this case, we don't want to continue with the case statement. Therefore, we're going to add this break statement right here. Then we have the second case of the channel value that we're aware of, which is channels.transaction. And in this case, what we want to do is we want to set the transaction within the local transaction pool. So we'll call this a transaction pool dot set transaction. And then the transaction object is going to be that parsed message. So we'll pass in the parse message into set transaction. Likewise, we want to break here. Now, the benefit of this pattern is that whenever we add a new channel now into the channels object at the top, all we have to do is add a new case within this switch statement. Now, we also want to have a default statement for a switch because that is the defined pattern for the switch. And in this case, we don't want to do anything. So we'll add a return statement, which is going to break out of the overall handle message function. We can also get rid of this if condition check over here. Cool. That completes the updates to the pub subclass to broadcast and handle transactions. So to review, make sure that there is the transaction pool field within the constructor. There is a transaction channel. And then most crucially, the handle message should also handle a channel's transaction message. 
And likewise, we want there to be a broadcast transaction method itself. Nice. Now there's further updates that we need to do within the main index.js file. We're already passing the transaction pool into PubSub, but now we actually want to broadcast a transaction when it's made in the API slash transact method. Let's head down to API slash transact. So if we're responding with a transaction that has been successfully created or updated, well, we should also notify all interested parties of this new transaction. Therefore, we'll call pubsub.broadcast transaction right here, and we're going to pass in this transaction object. Now, the beauty of this implementation, again, is that this will handle transaction updates. For each local blockchain application, they're going to call transaction.update if their wallet recognizes that they already have a transaction in the pool. This will create a new version of the transaction thanks to the update method, and then that's going to get broadcasted to all interested parties. Now, the interested parties, they're not going to have the local wallet, but they will have a transaction set with the same transaction ID in their pool. So this is going to cause your pool to overwrite their version of that transaction with the new and updated transaction data at that same transaction ID. So let's actually check this out. We're going to start up a couple instances of the application. We'll have our main instance as well as a peer. So in the command line, make sure to fire npm run dev within one instance for the main application. And then in the second instance of the command line, fire npm run dev peer, which is going to start another instance at a randomly generated port. Mine happens to be 3819. All right, cool. Now let's open up Postman. And we want to make a transaction. So configure a post request at localhost 3000 slash API slash transact. The body should be raw JSON application JSON. There should be a recipient and then a valid amount. So how about 45 for this one? Cool. So once we send this request, it should certainly respond with a successful transaction. And the key is now making a second request at the localhost 3000 API slash transaction pool map. So go ahead and request for that. And you should find that transaction exists within the transaction pool map. Now, a key thing to look out for is that the second peer also has this data. So if you head back to the command line and look at the peer instance, which for me is the second one, and actually you can confirm that the transaction was already broadcasted because it should have logged that a message was received on the transaction channel. So it looks like our broadcasts of the transaction are working just fine. But as an extra check, you're going to want to look at the posted port. So yours has a 999 out of a thousand chance of being different than mine. But plug that in into the get request and then set a request for that transaction pool map. And you should find that they're exactly identical. Cool. Now even updates to the same actual transaction at the localhost root. So at localhost 3000 with a new transaction is going to update that transaction within the response. But this should have been broadcasted to the peer as well. So if you make a request again to the peer, you should find that it contains the updated data as that transaction has been overwritten at the same transaction ID. All right. So indeed, the transaction pool map is in sync across all the peers. Nice. Now there is one last improvement to make. Recall that we needed to make sure the blockchains were in sync on startup. When a peer starts up, they won't have the overall blockchain available until they wait for a blockchain message when a new block is mined. But a way to resolve this issue is to request the blockchain from the known root node. Likewise, a transaction pool map for the peers won't be in sync with the overall network until a new transaction is broadcasted. So in this case, the solution is going to be the same. We'll sync the transaction pool map on a connect. Now, as a challenge, you can try implementing this logic yourself. All right, let's do this next.